Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this session. And today we shall discuss about foodborne illnesses. Every year, thousands of people suffer from food poisoning as a result of eating food that may look, taste and smell perfectly normal. But it is in fact contaminated with large numbers of harmful bacteria. To reduce this, it is essential that all people who prepare and serve food in a commercial environment or in the home should understand how food poisoning arises and how it could be prevented. One careless act causing an outbreak of food poisoning can lead to the loss of reputation or even the closure of an otherwise successful catering establishment. In this session, we are going to see what is foodborne illness and the different types of foodborne illness, bacterial food infection, food storage and the important cause of food spoilage, the various signs of food spoilage and the measures to protect food and food storage and the heating and reheating procedures. Moving on to our first module, Foodborne Illnesses. Foodborne illness, also known as foodborne disease or known as food poisoning, is any illness resulting from the consumption of contaminated food. Some of the microorganisms that cause foodborne illnesses are bacteria and viruses. Among all these microorganisms, Bacterial contamination is the most commonly occurring cause of foodborne illnesses in the catering industry. It usually results from mishandling of food. These illnesses are characterized by a severe disturbance of the stomach and intestine, which occurs after consuming food, in which the offending bacteria were given a chance to multiply. Such illnesses are broadly divided into two categories, foodborne infections and foodborne intoxications. Foodborne infections are caused by the entrance of pathogenic microorganisms containing food into the body and the reaction of body tissues to their presence. These can either be fungal, bacterial, viral or parasitic. Foodborne infections tend to have long incubation periods and are usually characterized by fever. Foodborne intoxications are diseases caused by consumption of food containing intoxicants which are found in tissues of certain plants and animals. Foodborne intoxications have short incubation periods like minutes to hours and are characterized by lack of fever. Foodborne intoxications can be further classified into bacterial intoxications, fungal intoxications, chemical intoxication, plant toxicants and poisonous animals. Foodborne diseases can be transmitted in many ways such as contact transmission which can occur when there is direct or indirect contact with the source of disease. Vehicle transmission that can be caused when a food item becomes the carrier. For example, when milk, water and other foods act as a vehicle for transmitting disease. Vector transmission that occurs when insect and other invertebrate host transmit insection by injecting into the skin either by biting or by depositing infective material on the skin, food or other objects. The transmission can also happen via their feet and bodies. Airborne transmission can occur by droplet infection, droplet nuclei and infectious dust. Droplet infections can occur when a person sneezes or coughs and expels particles of moisture containing a large number of organisms 
up to a radius of 1 meter or more. When the moisture from smaller droplets evaporates, minute particle of virus or bacteria which are called droplet nuclei remain suspended in the air. The transmission of foodborne illnesses can occur either directly or indirectly. In the case of direct transmission, the microbes may be transmitted from the food handler directly to the food. When you cough or sneeze on or near the food, droplets containing microorganisms may fall on the food and leads to illnesses. Indirect transmission happens when the host of a communicable disease may transmit pathogen indirectly through various routes onto prepared food and from there to other people consuming the contaminated food. The other indirect routes of transmission are contaminated utensils and equipment, sewage polluted water and food grown on polluted soil or through faulty plumbing, soil the linen, door handles and taps, insects like flies and cockroaches, rodents like rats and mice, infected animals and their product. Apart from what I have already mentioned, foodborne illnesses can also be caused by cross-contamination. Cross-contamination can be defined as the transfer of microorganisms from something dirty to something clean or from a food containing many bacteria to a food with less bacteria by means of a non-food vehicle such as chopping boards, knife, utensils and equipment, work surfaces, dish cloth, etc., hands of the food handler, drops of liquid oozing from contaminated food and infected droplets from coughs and sneeze. In this context, we shall also see what are bacteria. Bacteria are primitive single-celled organism about 1 micrometer in size, that is 1 by 1000 of a millimeter. <music> on to our second module, bacterial food infection. Bacterial food infection is the commonest cause of bacterial foodborne diseases. Organisms of the Salmonella group cause an infection in the intestine. Many species are infectious. These rod-shaped bacteria are aerobic and not spore producing. Illness occurs when living organisms are ingested in large numbers. Now we shall discuss on the key food poisoning sources which are viruses, moles and yeast. Viruses. Viruses are not organisms at all in the strict sense. A virus is made up of particles called virions. Each particle consists of a tiny piece of genetic material wrapped in a protein shell. Virions are around 30 nanometers in size, that is only 0.03 the size of bacteria. Virions cannot be seen through an ordinary microscope. However, most of them can be observed with an electron microscope and they are recognized by their characteristic shapes. Moles. Moles are microscopic fungi which live by breaking down dead organic matter. Since most human food consists of dead organic material, moles are an important cause of food spoilage. Numerous techniques are used to deter them. Yeast. Yeast is not known to produce mycotoxins or to cause severe foodborne illness. However, several yeast species are known to cause food spoilage. Most prefer to grow in fruit juices, syrup or jam. 
FU will also cause spoilage of cheese and meats. Spoiled products cause mild intestinal discomfort when eaten. However, yeast are not regarded as causes of foodborne illness and do not produce toxins. Moving on to the third module. Now we shall discuss on food storage and the important cause of food spoilage. Food storage. All catering establishments, irrespective of the volume of business handled, should have adequate temperature controlled storage facilities include a dry food store, refrigerated stores and deep freezers. These facilities will prevent the entry and multiplication of microorganisms and preserve the quality of food. Food spoilage refers to undesirable changes occurring in food due to the illness of air, heat, light, moisture which foster the growth of microorganisms. Foods take different period of time to lose their natural form through spoilage. In this context, to food preservation, foods are classified as perishable that includes meat, fish, milk, fruits and some vegetables, semi-perishable like eggs, onions, potatoes, carrots and beans and non-perishable like cereals, pulses and nuts. Foods are always spoiled by the action of microorganisms, enzymes and insects. The microorganisms are responsible for food spoilage are moles, yeast and bacteria. Moving on to the first category, moles. Molds are in the form of threads developed on perishable foods and are easily visible to the eye. They contain spores which can spread through the air and start new mold plants. When these molds find a favorable environment, they germinate. Yeast Yeast are tiny organisms which are not visible to the naked eye but which can be seen through the microscope. They multiply very fast and cause fermentation by acting on certain components of the perishable foods like fruits, juices, syrups, etc. Bacteria are unicellular organisms and are much smaller in size than either yeast or moles. They occur in different sizes and shapes. They also vary in their requirement for food, moisture, acidity, temperature and oxygen. Bacteria can grow and develop rapidly between 20 degrees Celsius and 53 degrees Celsius. Food spoilage can also be caused by enzymes. Enzymes are organic catalysts present in living cells. The life of every living cell depends upon the chemical reactions activated by these enzymes. Hence, they cause food spoilage due to the chemical reactions. Enzymes are sensitive to heat and are easily destroyed by heat. They can act from 0 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. Their optimum temperature of reaction is usually 37 degree Celsius. All enzymes are inactivated by temperatures above 80 degree Celsius. Therefore, enzyme activity can be prevented by heating foods to temperature which inactivate the enzymes. Spoilage by insects like worms, bugs, weevils, fruit flies cause extensive damage to food and reduce its nutritional value and make it unfit for human consumption. <music> Module 4, 
we talk about the sign of spoilage and the various measures to protect food. Food is perishable by nature. Changes will take place naturally in all food while it is being handled and stored by the processor, retailer and the purchaser. The changes can be rapid as with spoilage of raw meat and fish or spoilage and deterioration can take place over a period of days or weeks. Example, bread becomes moldy, biscuits become stale and soft and processed meats become smelly and slick. For some foods, example, retorted and very dry foods, the deterioration in the quality may not become apparent until after months or even years of storage. These foods are described as shelf stable. Heat treatment of food. Some foods are heat treated before they are sold to the public to reduce the risk of food poisoning. The temperature and the length of time for which the food is heated determine the number and type of microorganism that will be killed. The two main method of heat treatment applied to foods are sterilization and pasteurization. Sterilization is a heat process that is designed to destroy all microorganisms and their spores. Pasteurization is a milder heat process that is designed to reduce the number of spoilage microorganisms and destroy all the pathogenic ones. Milk, liquid, egg and ice cream mix must be either pasteurized, ultra heat treatment treated or sterilized before they are sold. Date marking is the next concept that we are going to discuss now. Food labeling regulations introduced on 1st January 1991 make it compulsory for most foods to carry a date mark. The date mark indicates the date before which the food will be at its best to eat, if it has been stored correctly. It can be in one of the three forms. For foods, that keep for three months or less, best before, followed by day and month. For foods that keep for more than three, best before end, followed by the month and year. For highly perishable foods, that is those likely to cause illness if not eaten in the recommended time. The use by, followed by date. The last module of this session is on the different ways of food storage. Food can be stored at low temperature in the following ways. Refrigeration. All foods that support bacterial growth must be kept in a refrigerator for short term storage. These include raw meat and poultry, fresh fish including shellfish, cooked meat, cooked fish and foods containing them as ingredients egg pies, pastas, soup and gravy, milk, cream, cheese, egg and food containing them as ingredients cream cakes and cooked rice. The temperature inside a refrigerator should be kept between 1 degree Celsius and 4 degree Celsius. Freezers. Freezers are widely used in catering premises as well as at home for long term, low temperature storage of foods. Majority of bacteria will survive the freezing process and can remain inactivate for months or years in the frozen foods. Blast freezer. The blast freezer is a chamber with a continuous blast of cold air at minus 2 degrees Celsius circulating through it. 
This provides a very rapid method of freezing and gives a better quality than a domestic freezer. Open top display freezers. These are not intended to be used for freezing food. They are only intended for storing it before sale. Storage times may be different from those shown for a domestic freezer. So, the manufacturer's recommendation should be observed. Now we shall discuss the storage of food at room temperature. We have dry food stores. All foods that do not require refrigerated storage such as rice, flour, pulses, canned foods, fresh fruit and vegetable should be stored in a room that is cool, dry, clean, well lit and ventilated. Storage rooms should be designed so that pets and insects cannot enter them easily. As an additional precaution, all open food in the stores should be covered and placed above floor level. Stock rotation is very important. If the packets and cans in the store do not have a date mark, some method of marking must be devised to ensure that old stock is used before new stock begin to use. Storage of food at high temperature. If food is to be served within a short time of preparation, it will probably be more convenient to store it hot rather than cooling and reheating it again. Cold food must not be reheated as the heating process would be too slow and would allow extensive bacterial growth. Correct food handling procedures. Correct temperature control of food is the single most important consideration when preparing food if food poisoning is to be avoided. Care taken to prevent cross-contamination during food preparation will significantly reduce the numbers of food poisoning bacteria found on food. Thawing Many foods can be taken from the freezer and cooked without thawing. But poultry, joints of meat and large volumes of food must be completely thawed before cooking. It has to be defrozen thoroughly before cooking. Instead, it will probably reach a temperature within the danger zone that is 5 degrees Celsius to 63 degrees Celsius which will allow any bacteria present to multiply. Cooking food Cooking or cookery is the art of preparing food for consumption with the use of heat cooking techniques and the ingredients vary widely across the world reflecting unique environmental, economic and cultural traditions and trends. Food is a poor conductor of heat. The larger the volume of food, the longer it will take for heat to reach the center during cooking. While cooking, the temperature on the surface should be high enough to destroy any food poisoning bacteria. Cooling food. If food is to be served cold, it must be cooled as rapidly as possible after cooking. However, food that has just cooked should not be transferred straight from the oven to refrigerator as this would increase the temperature of the refrigerator above the maximum recommended temperature of 4 degrees Celsius. Food should be put in the refrigerator within one and a half hours of cooking and must be stored there until just before serving. Reheating of food is an important matter to discuss under this topic. Reheating either meat dishes or rice dishes is not good practice since both meat and rice are usually contaminated with the types of food poisoning bacteria that form pores. Reheating is a critical control point or a point at which reaching proper temperatures can help ensure that a food is safe to eat. 
Cooks must know the proper temperature for reheating food, monitor the reheating process and record temperatures of reheated foods. To conclude this session, we can say that biological contaminants, particularly bacteria, are the cause of most cases of foodborne illness. Process hygiene aims to minimize bacterial contamination, growth and survival by careful planning and control. Menus should be planned first because the product mix defines the step of the process. Planning the menu should consider food hygiene equally with marketing, productivity and profit.